Good morning, everybody. God bless y'all. It's Pastor John for a little Jesus coffee. Try not to. I'm going to get back to our Bible in uh, John chapter 3. Please read with me. We're going to start on verses 27 through 30. Let's recap what's been going on. Uh, Nicodemus came to him, and Jesus told him that he had to. Uh, uh, he had to make a lot of changes. He had to be um, baptized in water and the Spirit. And anyways, so he was dealing with all that. And then we got to our famous scriptures, where uh, John three sixteen and 17, where, uh, where God, for God so loved the world, he was one and only son, scriptures, right? So the, we hit that last time. And now we're going to bring a new subject because we just hit on John the Baptist after that. And John the Baptist, how he how uh, he was losing people. And then we're picking up where his disciples are upset because a bunch of people are going to Jesus instead of going to John the Baptist. <laughs> and uh, they're jealous and they're mad because people aren't coming out in droves and the thousands like they were before to John the Baptist. So let's pick it up we're right there. I'm going to read in uh, John uh, chapter 3 and 27 through 30. So if you guys don't mind reading with me or get your Bibles or your phones out, that'd be great. Thank you. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy, therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, increase, but I must decrease. Wow. Seriously powerful. First of all, I just want to get all the people right, so uh, the name's right. Um, the bride is us. We're the bride of Christ, the Christians, the believers. Uh, the friend is John in this story. Uh, and the bridegroom, of course, uh, is Jesus. So, All right, now, let us get to the first part of this. It says, a man can receive nothing, in verse 27, Chapter 3 in John. A man can receive nothing unless it's been given to him from heaven. So John answers his, his, the worried disciples first that, uh, that everything he had, including those who res responded to his ministry, were a gift from God. Oh, that's good. Wow. So it's so important to understand that this is not your church, your ministry. Your, it's, you don't own it. We don't own it. We're just caretakers. Now, we're blessed to be caretakers, but we don't own the ministry. I don't own this church that I'm in. There's a lot of people here. We have a board and leaders, and they're all important. And they're all a team. But in the end, it's God's church. And he's put a steward over the church, which is me. I'm the pastor. And the same thing, it may be if you're a ministry. Maybe you teach in a Sunday school class. Maybe you have a marriage ministry or a youth ministry or a children's ministry. You, or maybe you have ministry in the media or in the nursery or in the cleaning or the cooking or whatever, hospitality. All those things are important. Everything's important at church, but it's not your ministry. We're stewards of God's ministry. And he's saying that I, I wouldn't have anything if God didn't already give it to me. God gave you what you have. So it's his. He's the owner. You're the one working in it. Very important point. He said, I am... Then he said, I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. Oh, I love this about John the Baptist. He knew who he was. He knew his role. He knew his place. He knew who he was as a person. In Christ, in the Lord, in the gospel, <laughs> he knew his play. He knew his calling. He knew where he belonged. He knew what God wanted for him. 
I want to ask you today, do you know? Do you know what God wants for you? Do you know what he's asking for? Do you know what he's, he's calling you to do? If you don't know, I encourage you to just seek the Lord. Take some time. Pray. Fast. Wait. Ask God, Lord, what do you have for me? What's my role? John the Baptist knew his role. What is my role, Lord? All right. I'm going to keep the pace up here. He's a friend of the bridegroom. He makes a great point. If you go to a wedding, then at a wedding, no one stares at the friend of the bridegroom. No one stares at the guy next to him. No one stares at the one in the in watching the wedding. Everyone stares at the bride and the bridegroom. No one stares at anyone else except those two people, maybe the preacher, which is awkward sometimes, and me being the preacher. All right, so... When I get so therefore he says therefore this joy is mine, um, this joy of mine is fulfilled. John basically lost his church, lost his congregation to the guy across town. <laughs> the guy across town happened to be Jesus. He was fine with it. He lost thousands and thousands of people. They were cheering. They were waiting on his next word. They were fired up. They were getting baptized. John lost his ministry, basically, and he had a little dribble left of his ministry. People were, they were coming out a lot, but not in the thousands upon thousands upon thousands as they were before. He was a total celebrity. You think, well, I never considered John like that. He, I've considered John as some sort of oddity or some person who people mocked maybe in the city or whatever he... He was a wild man, lived out in the wilderness, you know. Sure, all that's true, but he was a celebrity. Everyone knew John the Baptist. Thought around the region and around the world, people were hearing about John the Baptist. People were going out seven miles away outside of town to get baptized. That's insane. So John the Baptist was a, a well-known celebrity, but he didn't care. What I love about this passage is that, John, you can be popular, you can be well known. You can be uh, well spoken of. People, you could people could brag on you and tell you how great you are, right? But it doesn't mean you have to be prideful. John the Baptist was one of the most humble people who ever walked the earth, and he was also a giant celebrity, super famous, and had a man of power. His words had power to change lives, and people would go, and they would listen to him. And some would mock. Some would would would. Uh, be against him, but as, as a whole, he was he was a powerful man who the the city feared, and the Jews especially feared the leaders of the Jewish of, of the Sanhedrin. They feared him because he was such a powerful guy and famous. But he was humble. You you can be humble in any circumstances. Humble is not about how people treat you; it's how you respond to all that adulation. Give God the glory, give God the praise, give God the honor, give God all that's due his and don't take any glory for yourself. Amen, I heard that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Amen right there, good job. All right, now I wanna go a little further here. It says that um, John didn't regret that people were attracted to Jesus. He, to him, that was the goal. He needed people to be turned to Jesus. We want people to talk about Jesus, go to Jesus, be about Jesus. And we just do our role, but he, we want people to do that and not for them to be focused on us. And then he hits them with the big line here. He says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Oh man, the battle cry of every believer. That we decrease, we decrease, he increases. Wow, that is, that is just a powerful, Powerful, powerful statement. I mean, that we become less and he becomes more. The more we become less, the more we are in Christ. The more he becomes more, we're in Christ. So John the Baptist also didn't quit his work. He kept working. Even though Jesus was out there baptizing, doing similar work, he didn't quit his work and say, well, I, don't, I can't stand the competition. See, competition is an evil spirit. We're not in competition with each other. There's millions and millions of lost souls out there. 
And he said, I still have work to do, even though these people are coming to, to, to Jesus. I'm going to still point them to Jesus, but I'm going to do my baptizing. You're not in competition with anybody. You are your own person doing your work, your own track, your own journey, your own race. You're running your own race. And you're only in competition, if you want to say it like that, with what God is expecting of you and calling of you to do. That's the only thing. You're with yourself in the calling, not with any other people. You need to just be obedient. So he just said, I don't care about it. I'm famous. I don't care I'm losing people. I'm just going to do the best I can. And sometimes ministry gets tough. But he looked at it as God's ministry, not his ministry. So it made all the difference. So what's the bottom line of this whole message today? Your ministry is God's ministry. And God gave it to you to be a steward. So... Don't take competition. Don't be upset if people aren't there sometimes. Go after new people. And God has, a, God has a great plan for you like he had with John. And John knew his plan. Be in his plan. So those are my key points of this message. I pray that you got something out of it. <laughs> I know that when I knew my calling at 15 years old to be a minister, I went after it. But I didn't go directly after it. I stopped for like... Oh, five years. I, I pursued something different. For five years, I pursued basketball to be a college player. Do I, I regret it? Yeah, you know, but it is what it is. I made a choice. I lost five years of serving the Lord in, in a big way. And I want to encourage you, don't lose five years of your life. Go, don't, if you lost five already or 15 or 10, go back, stop now and change it all. Be like that lady I talked to in college who was 40 years old and wept after she read one of my uh, uh, um, essays that we were writing uh, for a uh, speech class. We had to share it with somebody. And that lady, she was like 44, 42, something like that. And and she read it and we, we were just partners. She just partnered, our teacher partnered us up with everyone. And she read it and then she cried. And I said, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She said... Because you wrote about Paul, the missionary. I wanted to be a missionary when I was 20 years old. And I said, oh, wow. She said, I met a guy, though. I got married. We never, he never wanted to do that. And now I wasted my chance. And I told her, get right with God. Go after Jesus. Get, go for being a missionary. It's not too late. Follow your dream. Follow what God's called you to do. So that's what I'm telling you. Don't worry about whatever happened in the past. Don't get focused on if someone else has more. Or they do the same thing as you or whatever. There's no jealousy. There's no competition. Just do what you're supposed to do. You. Do what you're supposed to do. Do your responsibility in the Lord. If you don't know it, wait on the Lord. He'll tell you. You ask him, he will tell you. He loves you. Say, Lord, what do you have for me? How do I serve you? So I love y'all very much. Uh, he must increase and I must decrease. That's our battle cry. He must increase, I must decrease. Do it for Jesus, decrease and let him increase. Well, you all be super blessed. Remember God is for you, he is in you, and he is with you. You can't lose. So be super blessed. Bye.